Hi there, my name is Andy Heather. I'm a photographer, artist, and designer living and working in Kyoto, Japan. I'm also the lead singer for the digital groove rock band 1GK, and recently I've been working on the cover of our newest single, Life. Uh, we've timed the release to coincide with the uh, simultaneous uh, production of our first ever music video, which is being made uh, in full CGI. By a company in Tokyo called Buranko, and the video had a sort of a science, a science fiction futuristic theme. And the band asked me if I could create a, a, a cover to match. So I attempted a photographic montage in which I have included layers of uh, images of Kyoto, uh, something that smacks of history, and some very futuristic images. Uh, many of which were created by everyday objects, but with uh, filters attached and whatnot. As you can see here, this is the zeppelin in the sky um, on the screen at the moment, and uh, inside there are several fluorescent lights and light bulbs and buildings, and uh, there's a, an object at the bottom there made from black plastic and silver chrome that you may recognize. So I combined all of these objects together in layers to create this futuristic um, scene of some of the elements that appear in the song, which uh, include humans' propensity to war and love and relationships and uh, the value of those and, and how they could be the redeeming feature of uh, mankind despite the chaos and, and tragedy and evil that does also take place. So uh, it's an image that uh, attempts to match the themes of the lyrics. I'm going to turn off these layers one by one now and show you what went into the image. This is a, an HDR or high dynamic range image of a, a historical street in Kyoto. It's a medium exposure underexposure and overexposure well, that means a bright an average and a dark image combined in HDR FX Pro and then I added lots of detail lots of structure lots of blacks lots of contrast to give it this sort of gritty science fiction movie like look uh, I also removed the effect from the sky to leave those clouds intact uh, as I turn on the layers now you can see that there are lots of light bulbs and uh, fluorescent lights that I've taken photos of. I've added a glow to them by duplicating the, the layer, uh, adding a Gaussian blur to the top layer to give that diffuse effect, and then changing the screen, uh, the layer blending mode to something like luminosity. I've turned on the Zeppelin in the sky now, and you can see this is the original Zeppelin composite. The bottom layer is a US Navy Zeppelin photo that's now in the public domain, and I used the shape and then I added other objects like these lights along the bottom and these fluorescent lights along the side to give it a slightly more futuristic feel. I wanted this uh, image to have a sort of a steampunk feel. There's a power outlet at the bottom and there's a kettle, <laughs> chrome, a plastic kettle. Uh, I wanted it to have a, a historical and yet modern feel, a sort of a steampunk future feel to it. That green ring at the back, there is a train station ticket gate light and there's a, an access port that I've skewed and added to the top. This is a photo of lights in a building reflected in a window that I thought looked interesting so I took a photo of it, I cut it out and placed it on the Zeppelin and finally there's a roof with fluorescent lights. I selected the Zeppelin shape, placed that photo inside the selection and then changed the screen blend uh, the uh, layer blending modes to make it glow. Once it's in the sky it looks something like this. Uh, then we'll add some other effects later like smoke to help blend it into its environment a little better. As I turn on the layers you can see another light on the wall there trying to add a futuristic vibe to the street and that layer adds a glow to the Zeppelin as you can see. Again I duplicated it, I added a Gaussian blur and then I changed the screen blending modes to give it that glowing look. Uh, I think the screen, the layer blending mode I used for that one was screen. I'll continue to turn on these layers now so you can see the image uh, building up. Below the Zeppelin there you can see rays appearing. That is a, a ray of light brush that I used once uh, and then I rotated it and added it to the bottom of the ship to make it look like a sort of spotlight. Here as I turn on the layers you can see flames appearing on the buildings. It makes it look like uh, 
the area is on fire, under siege. Each one is a different photo of a different flame with different color and different qualities. Uh, I changed the opacity and the layer blending mode of each to uh, make them fit as well as I could into their environment. If I isolate one of them, you can see that I've added a, a mask to the original to cut around the fire just to make it fit that window a little nicer. If I turn on the next layer, you can see there's a black background there. And if you were to put that layer into your image and change the screen blending mode to normal you would see that black background and it wouldn't look very natural at all here it, uh, oh sorry i've just changed the layer blending mode of the wrong layer i'll select that layer i change this the layer blending mode to normal and you can see the black backdrop there now i want to make sure that disappears so it fits nicely in the image so i change the blending mode to screen the black disappears the flame goes a little transparent and everything looks a lot more natural I used that technique a lot more in the sky as well where I took a picture of an arrow and there's the moon for you. I took a, a photo of the moon, I added inner glow, an outer glow, some other effects and a Gaussian blur because the moon was a lot sharper than the rather gritty uh, blurred clouds that it's sitting in and it, it didn't uh, look natural so I blurred it slightly to make it fit in but uh, it's a technique often used with CG in movies as well. As I turn on the layers you can see these flaming arrows appear in the sky. These are uh, a photo of a fire that has been stretched and skewed to look like it's blowing in the wind and I added that layer to an arrow shot. As I zoom in here you could probably just see the arrow uh, and I lock those together to make a sort of flaming arrow shape. I then duplicated that layer multiple times. I changed the size, the shape, the orientation and the blending mode of each of those arrows to give them a slightly different quality. As you can see some look darker than others. That's achieved by using the screen blending mode or the color burn blending mode or the light and blending mode depending on the distance from camera in inverted commas. As, a, as you can see if I was to select that layer and turn it to a different blending mode it would become much darker but if I put it back to lighten uh, layer blending mode you can see that it looks a lot more natural the black disappears it fits into its background it looks like it's a long way away from the camera so it looks more natural as I turn on the layers now you can see a few more arrows appearing to fly over the buildings uh, as if some kind of ancient war was taking place in a futuristic environment I like the juxtaposition of the very old and the the hyper modern uh, I also went to some lengths to fill the image with uh, depth. I like to have particles in the air, filling the air with depth, giving it a sort of a, a layer cake, what, what uh, Ridley Scott referred to as a 75 layer cake. Um, as I turn on the layers now, you can see the couple uh, appear at the front of the image there. As you can see, the original is quite warm, which is uh, beautiful in its place. There's lots of red and orange skin tones there, but I wanted this to look more futuristic. I wanted them to look a bit more robotic. I wanted them to look a bit more hunted and scared and cold and moon kissed. So I changed the colors using a photo filter here to add some blue. Uh, I also created a white layer here by selecting the couple and filling it with white and uh, that brightens their skin somewhat. Uh, at the bottom I've added some shadow by uh, creating a black gradient and then changing the screen mode and opacity to uh, soft light to uh, add a sort of a shadowy effect at the bottom. So it appears that they're lit above by the fluorescent lights and uh, at the bottom they're slightly more in shadow. Uh, I then uh, added a layer of 50% uh, grey and that changed the screen mode to overlay. Uh, the grey disappears but if you paint on top of that layer you can uh, see the highlights. If you paint in white you get highlights, if you paint in black you get low lights. So I've painted highlights to this layer as you can see if I turn it off and then on again. Uh, kind of a subtle effect but it gives it a filmic almost fantasy look and as I said earlier I changed the blending mode to overlay so that the grey wasn't visible. This also is a 50% grey layer uh, blend mode switch to overlay and I drew shadows on it as I turn it on and off you should be able to see the shadows appear and disappear. It's a kind of a movie poster style effect that I, I find quite attractive. It lets you add a bit of contrast by hand if you want it in one area not another. Here I've uh, added some more photo filters, I've added some curves and some colors, that's a, a blue to cool them down which is blended and the transparency is reduced. There's a curves layer there to add uh, brightness and contrast to the couple 
And here I've brightened up her hair by painting uh, a levels adjustment onto the image and then using a mask to cover most of the adjustment but leave her hair and their upper bodies brightened as if by those fluorescent lights on the building or perhaps the moon or perhaps an, uh, a ship passing overhead. And there's another layer that just uh, adds to the, uh, the shadows of the image, gives it a little more depth. Now as we move up, I'll turn on the next layer and you can see that uh, we've got snow falling now. Uh, I like, as I said, to add extra particles into the air. So I've got two layers of snow. If I isolate one of these layers, you can see that it's actually a photo of snow taken against a black backdrop. Uh, as we did before, I changed the layer blending mode to screen. The black disappears, leaving just the snow, uh, and it gives them the image a bit of extra depth. It also helps to hide a multitude of sins. It helps to uh, helps those elements to sit nicely in their environment and look more natural. This is my cloud mode. I opened a new layer, I selected render clouds, and then I created a mask, and then I painted on that mask where I wanted my clouds to appear. If I turn on the other layers, you can see that I've added some clouds, or smoke, if you like, to the bottom of the image around the couple, uh, as if the alley was filling with smoke. Uh, I've added it to the buildings here, coming out of the windows where they're on fire, and I've added it in the sky as trails after these arrows by painting onto that mask with a white brush. And if I turn them off, and on again, you can see the difference. If you think there's a bit too much smoke in the image, maybe it's damaging the color contrast, you can pull that opacity down to maybe 40% and uh, reduce the smokiness of the image a bit. Above that, we have a few photo filters to change the colors. Uh, overall, uh, you want to try and make the colors look as matched as you can. They're from various sources, but if you can add a few photo filters on the top of everything to give them the same cast, it makes it look like they were taken with the same camera from the same viewpoint at the same time. And that's basically uh, how I created the illusion of a futuristic and yet historical Kyoto street on fire. I hope you like the image. Uh, please let me know if you